Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC, and I just wanted to make a short video of how I use the N4PY control software with my Omni 7 and also to control or communicate with other devices that are plugged into the computer that I use in the uh, station here. So this Microsoft Word document shows a list of uh, devices connected to the computer and uh, by extension uh, connected to the N4PY software. So the first, of course, is the Tentec Omni 7 transceiver. Then there's the Model 302 remote tuning control, my Elecraft KPA 500 amplifier. This uh, ADR2200 serial relay board is used for automatic antenna switching. The Ensemble 2 software-defined receiver is used as a pan adapter or second receiver to the Omni 7. And then, of course, the Logic version 9 logging software is my uh, logbook and it communicates with the N4PY software through the Pegasus file interface. So when I make a new logbook entry, the logbook program reads the mode and frequency from the N4PY software and plugs that into the logbook entry. My computer has four serial ports because the Omni 7 transceiver, the uh, amplifier, and the serial relay board are all plugged into nine pin serial ports on the back of the computer maybe you could use USB to serial converters for these I don't know I've never used those I just went out and bought a card to plug into my computer that contains four serial ports and I use those and it works fine so that's that's how I do it so the first thing I'll talk about is the remote tuning encoder and you can see that up here in the uh, webcam display in the upper right hand corner uh, my bargain basement uh, webcam. You can, uh, of course, operate. You, th this plugs into the back of the radio, so you can use this with the radio, you know, without the software. And there are three function keys that you can't see. They're above the tuning knob. But through the radio menu, you can program these function keys to do a few things. Uh, but with the N4PY software, you can program those function keys to do many more things. And you can also program the keys on the keypad which you cannot do from the radio menu so you can assign these buttons to different functions and then uh, you know you can you can operate the radio a lot without having to take your hand off the tuning control if you program the buttons to do those functions that you like to use the most so for instance I have the 9 key programmed for the VFO a, I have the 8 key program for RF gain, the 7 key for volume, the 5 key for filter. So in the display, in the N4PY display, you can see uh, this yellow here says VFO A. So that reflects the function that the keypad is currently set to. So if I push the 8 key on the keyboard, on the keypad, you'll see this change in the and for PY software to RFG for RF gain. So if I rotate the control knob on the keypad or the, the encoder on the keypad, you'll see the RF gain slider go up and down. And all the other functions work the same. You push the uh, button and then uh, if that function has uh, settings that can be changed, you rotate the knob one way or the other to change those settings. And this is really handy. If you operate the radio using the software, I really encourage you to, to get uh, one of these remote tuning encoders if you don't have one because it really adds a lot of functionality to the operation of the software. So the next thing is the Elecraft amplifier. which is uh, controlled through this settings window. So this line here, you configure the software so that it knows that the amplifier is connected, knows what COM port it's connected to. And then when you do that, you'll see this line in the, in the uh, call sign in top 10 settings window. So you can power the amplifier on or off. You can put the amplifier into operator standby mode. You can see the uh, output the amplifier output, power output here, the operating temperature here, and if the amplifier faults for any reason, the fault code will be displayed here, and, you, and the amplifier will go into standby mode, 
and then uh, you can click this button to clear that fault then go fix whatever caused the fault in the first place and then put the amplifier back in operate mode so this is uh, in black so the amplifier is in standby mode you click it and it turns red and now you're in operate mode so it's just it's real handy to be able to uh, do these things uh, control the amplifier this way from the software I, I really like this The next thing uh, we'll talk about is the uh, serial relay board. So this is a circuit board that has eight relays on it and a serial port that plugs into your computer and you can use software to turn these relays on or off. And then the output of this relay board is wired across the control box for my Ameritron RCS 8V antenna switch so that uh, once you get this hooked up properly to your computer and to your antenna switch you can uh, and then configure the software to tell it which relay to turn on to select a particular antenna for a particular band you configure all that in the software and then uh, anytime you change bands the antenna the right antenna is automatically selected and you can see that in the transmitter settings window. So I have it set to auto, but you can also uh, select the antennas manually. So there are eight relays on the board. There are eight antennas. This is antenna number eight, although it's sort of overwritten with the text for this parameter here. And I got this idea from uh, Randy, K7AGE has a YouTube channel and he has a lot of videos on a lot of different subjects and one of them was where he added a serial relay board to his station uh, controlled by the software that he uses I think he uses TRX manager and his video uh, shows how he uh, installed it got it wired up to the antenna switch got it wired into the computer got it uh, configured in the software and the, uh, the ADR2200 board that I use wires in exactly the same way. The uh, relay outputs are comparable to the relay outputs on the board that he used. And you can really follow those instructions to wire this board uh, into your... And you don't have to wire it into the antenna switch, I don't suppose. You could probably wire it directly to the coax relay box and bypass the uh, antenna control box. But I like to... I like the antenna control box because it still works. So you can use the control box to select the antennas manually if you like by just turning the knob on the control box or you can do it from the software either way so you don't lose anything. Uh, you know, you don't lose any of the antenna switch original functionality by doing it this way. So go to YouTube, look up K7AGE at his YouTube channel, and then scroll through those videos and you'll see the one uh, where he uh, shows you how to wire in or shows you how he wired in the serial relay board into his station. It's, it's pretty slick. So the next thing is the uh, Ensemble 2 software defined receiver. Um, the uh, antenna connection on this software defined receiver goes uh, plugs into the back of the Omni 7. There's a couple of spare RCA jacks on the back of the radio. So internally the radio is wired so that the antenna connection is uh, fed to those two antenna jacks or those two spare RCA connectors, I'm sorry. And once you do that, uh, then you can plug the antenna connection of this of the SDR into the back of the radio so that you're sharing the antenna and not only that but when you put the Omni 7 into transmit mode the SDR is protected uh, uh, against uh, the, the, the transmitter so you don't blow up the receiver when you transmit uh, once again you know you you get the eight I use HD SDR software so you get the SDR receiver configured and working on its own before you try to hook it up to the Omni 7 and once you get it working like it's supposed to 
then you can configure it, uh, configure the Omni 7 or the N4POI software to work with it. And this is really nice because uh, when you tune the Omni 7, the, H, the uh, software defined receiver will follow. You can see the screen where they track each other. And it works both ways. So if you come up here and you click uh, on a signal, you'll see that the Omni 7 is tuned to that same frequency. So you can look at the signals on the band, click on one, and the radio is the Omni 7 is tuned to that frequency. Now you can. Uh, disable that connection between the Omni, the N4PY software and the HDSDR software. Uh, you select CAT to HDSDR and unclip this and then you can tune them independently. So you can see when I change frequencies in the SDR, the Omni 7 stays where it was. So if you wanted to listen to a different frequency on the same band or if you wanted to listen to uh, a different band, you can do that. I, I generally don't use it that way. I generally uh, keep them connected so that I can uh, mostly use this for the pen adapter. And then uh, you'll see when I reactivated that connection, the Omni 7 was tuned to the SDR's frequency. So then the last thing to talk about is the uh, logging software. So uh, you can see the radio is on this frequency. So if I enter a new entry into the logbook, I'll just use my own call sign for fun. Then you can see that the mode and the frequency were uh, read from the radio and plugged into the logbook entry. So that when you save that, then you know it's just one less thing you have to do. Uh, it fills that in for you. But I'm going to delete this since I don't really need it in here. And uh, the last thing I'll talk about is uh, what I've done. I have a signal link USB uh, interface, digital interface box uh, to use with the digital modes. But really, it'll route any of the received audio from the radio to the computer. And that's how we're listening to the uh, radio across the computer is through that. Uh, because of the, through the signal link USB box and that lets you do a couple of things you can record then if you've got recording software you can record the audio uh, if you wanted to or if you have software uh, for your sound card so I have this software here and there's a uh, an equalizer here and I've got some settings set up that, so that to, to, to adjust the audio so if I select this custom 2, you can see on the equalizer display it makes a bit of a difference and you can hear the difference too. So if there are certain signals that you think might sound better, if you could tweak them a little bit with an audio equalizer, you can do that in your own in the computer without having to hook up any external uh, boxes like a Behringer, you know, equalizer or anything. Just do it in the computer, and it works pretty well. So I know that was pretty quick, but that's uh, about all I had to show you. Um, so 
hopefully this was interesting and maybe gave you a couple of ideas if you're thinking about using the software or if you're already using it and maybe you want to do some new things with it. Maybe this uh, gave you some ideas. So uh, thank you for watching.